So, we are discussing the statistical properties of the OLS estimator. And, uh, of course, the properties depend on the assumptions that we are willing to make. Uh, so, uh, the purpose of this lesson is to, to uh, give an idea of uh, what kind of uh, desirable properties there uh, could be. And uh, I'll also review the assumptions uh, of, the, of the Woolrich textbook uh, about the OLS estimator. So, the statistical theory and economic theory, of course, uh, uh, includes a large number of uh, desirable properties of the estimator. And my purpose here is not to have like an exhaustive list of everything, everything desirable, but to give you a flavor of how we, how we econometrician would uh, uh, think about the properties. So there is some, some uh, uh, properties that, uh, that we will consider indicated on this slide, and we can classify them to so-called finite sample properties and asymptotic properties. So finite sample properties uh, are such that uh, they would be applicable to any sample size. You could have 10 observations or 100 observations or million observations, uh, and these properties still are valid. Whereas then asymptotic properties are um, such that uh, they co are concerned in the case that, okay, what happens if I have a, a arbitrarily large sample size? What if I have all the data that I could possibly have uh, uh, what happens in this kind of ideal condition that the, the, the sample size or small sample size is not really an issue. And uh, I will mainly focus on the, on the finite sample properties of unbiasedness and uh, efficiency of the OLS estimator. And then I will, um, at a relatively superficial level, then uh, try to get, tell you about what is, the, what is consistency, what is this meaning in the present context. It's different from the logical consistency and, uh, and uh, then quite important property of asymptotic normality. So I will formally prove you the unbiasedness of the OLS estimator in the single linear regression case, but I do not go to the uh, technical proofs of those properties. Those are beyond the scope of this present course. But, uh, but uh, to give you indeed an idea that, okay, these kind of properties, they are not just somehow uh, subjective opinions, but they are actually uh, mathematically proven facts. So, of course, to prove those uh, those facts, we need to make some kind of uh, uh, some kind of assumptions. And this uh, this kind of link between properties and assumptions is quite important. And this is what I want to also highlight for you in this course that you are you are also able to see that okay, if some of these kind of uh, standard assumptions fails, then how does it affect the classic OLS estimator, and then what could be the remedy for the, such kind of failure, because much of the econometrics, and particularly modern econometrics, is actually dealing with these violations of the, of the assumptions and their remedies. But it's kind of naive to jump to the remedies if you don't have the idea of uh, what is it supposed to be, uh, so what's the problem that it's trying to solve. Okay. So here is on this slide, I have a uh, reproduce the, the list of uh, assumptions uh, made by, uh, by Jeffrey Woolrich in his textbooks. And this refers to the uh, single linear regression. So this abbreviation SLR refers to the single linear regression where we have just uh, one explanatory variable X. I already referred to these assumptions in the previous lesson. So, so the basic assumption is that model is correctly specified. So this, uh, this true, uh, true regression or theoretical regression equation holds. Um, to be able to use, uh, use uh, probability theory, uh, we also then uh, assume that this, our data are randomly, sam from the, sam randomly sampled from the population. Uh, both are hopefully quite intuitive assumptions. Third assumption I also also discussed already in the previous uh, previous lesson. So we assume that there's some variation in our x variable that uh, we, we cannot have just a constant as an explanatory variable explanatory variable x. Otherwise, we cannot even calculate the, the OLS estimator. And then fourth and fifth assumptions then then refer to the error term epsilon. Uh, the fourth assumption is that uh, that this uh, uh, epsilon has uh, zero conditional mean. So this uh, uh, notice that this expected value E 
has now this, uh, we, we calculate the expected value of epsilon, but uh, this uh, upper bar indicates that it should be conditional on x. So this is the conditional expectation. And uh, uh, for the given level of x, the expected value of epsilon should be always, always zero. The uncon unconditional mean would be just the, the expected value of epsilon, but, uh, but uh, this uh, conditional mean is that epsilon conditional on, 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 on x. So the, for the given value of x, the expected value should be zero. So the zero conditional mean is slightly stronger condition than just that unconditional uh, mean of epsilon should be zero. I will discuss that uh, in more detail later on. And the fifth one is that uh, also this is uh, now conditional variance. So this is referred to as a homoscedasticity assumption. So we assume that the variance of epsilon for any given level of x is constant sigma squared. Okay. So at this point, it's perhaps good to mention that uh, that uh, there's surprisingly large uh, differences in the how the how different textbooks treat the assumptions of the linear regression model. So if you if you compare, for example, the Jeffrey Woolrich's text to to some other econometrics texts, then the list of assumptions can look uh, rather different. Although very often they actually uh, are are considering very similar similar kind of uh, um, un underlying the the assumptions are rather similar, but the way that the assumptions are stated is often very different. And one point I want to con point out here also is that uh, that uh, notice that uh, uh, in this list of assumptions, uh, uh, we do not assume that this uh, error term epsilon should be normally distributed. So this is in many texts actually this normality assumption is uh, is uh, stated, and uh, it appears to be quite a common misperception in uh, even in the academic community that the linear regression model requires that epsilon uh, epsilon error term is normally distributed, but uh, here it is not even mentioned. So I come back to that point also. Also, so I want to just highlight that explicitly that I do not assume that epsilon has to be normally distributed because I believe that this is not really needed for most of the purposes. So this is also important to have the link between the assumptions and properties to clearly understand that, okay, what happens if some assumption is violated? So for example, if the error term epsilon doesn't have normally distributed errors, then what, what happens? We will get back to that. So next, uh, I want to also extend this list of assumptions to the, to the multiple regression context. So if you have multiple explanatory variables, then the similar kind of lists can be, can be extended. And I believe that's also one of the reasons why the uh, Wooldridge text uh, states those assumptions is that, that way for the single regression, because then it can be uh, more easily e extended to the to the multiple regression. So, so this is quite straightforward. A couple of points are worth noting, though. So, again, in a multiple regression case, we continue to uh, assume that uh, that the model is uh, correctly specified. We continue to assume that we have a random sample from the population. And uh, assumption number three. Uh, also now requires that okay there's we need to have some kind of sample sample variation in x so so there is not any constant term among these multiple explanatory variables but also we need to assume that uh, not any any pair of uh, explanatory variables are perfectly uh, linearly dependent so so there's no perfect uh, collinearity so this is this like the weak, worst case of uh, uh, multicollinearity that if we have two variables that are are perfectly dependent so for example if we would have some kind of uh, um, cost of capital measured in euros and measured in us dollars it would be of course perfectly perfectly dependent so it doesn't make make sense to have such kind of variables again i would say that this assumption number three is not really in my mind it's not really assumption about the linear regression model it's more uh, assumption about the data uh, and so is also assumption number two that this, uh, this is a random sample and this random sample satisfies the certain conditions 
whereas then assumption number four and five uh, they are particularly about this uh, this uh, data generating process and particularly about the uh, our random variable epsilon so this um, zero conditional mean now in the multivariate case extends to the case that expected value of x ex, expected value of epsilon conditional on the vector of uh, of x variables so conditional on all explanatory variables is equal to the zero and the same for the homoscedasticity so variance of epsilon conditional on all x variables is equal to constant sigma squared okay and for clarity we also need to say that this uh, variance sigma squared is finite so it's it cannot be infinitely large so I will come back to these, these assumptions later, but uh, again, I want to say that indeed the way that the assumptions are stated uh, is different in many, many textbooks. So this shouldn't be taken as this kind of like a biblical truth. And, and certainly you shouldn't just memorize this list of assumptions by heart. In this course, it's much more important to understand that what is the role of each assumption uh, in the statistical properties and later on in the course, we also then consider in detail what happens when these assumptions fail, particularly the zero conditional mean and, uh, and uh, homoscedasticity assumption. Okay, so, so that's, that's what, uh, what we need to take this, uh, always these assumptions with a uh, little grain of salt, that it's not by, that's something that, uh, that uh, is just, uh, you need to memorize by heart, but uh, but something that you need to understand that what's the importance of these assumptions? Why do you need that assumption? Because when the assumption fails, then you also need to be equipped to to then then uh, uh, to find some kind of remedies for those failures. So that's very very important part of the econometrician's toolbox. And this is why I also pay so much attention to the to the assumptions and properties to 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 understand the role of the assumptions. So in the next video lesson, I will then go to the finite sample properties of unbiasedness and efficiency. And there we will utilize some of those assumptions to, to, to prove the, particularly I will prove the unbiasedness. So see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.